Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back today. Now, 18 months ago now, I told everyone that this was going to happen, and now it looks like it has started. One point I would make on this video before we even get started, if you don't normally watch my videos all the way through to the end, I would say to watch it all the way through today because to understand the end, I really need to give you context throughout and explain exactly what's going on here. But we are gonna be talking about this stuff here, cash, money. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, euros or British pounds here or, you know, US dollars. It makes no difference whatsoever. We're gonna be talking about your money and why it is not safe. So let's go over to the shared screen now then and get this started. So for those of you who have been subscribers for a while, you remember I made this video. Can your bank now steal your money? Bailins explained. This video has now got over a quarter of a million views from February of 2021. Now, in this video, I was talking about something that wasn't really common knowledge at the time, even though the publication date of this was 2012, just as we were coming out the last financial crisis known as the Great Recession. So this was from the International Monetary Fund and it was called From Bail Out to Bail In. Mandatory, look at I've highlighted this word, debt restructuring of systemic financial institutions. And as I know that many of you want to read these documents, like I like to read these documents, this is called the IMF Staff Discussion Note, April 24th, 2012. So you can just do a search and you'll be able to find this. Now, what does it talk about and why do I need to give you context here? Well, very importantly, we have something called bailouts that were used during the last Great Recession, 2008, 2012, 13 period. And this is where the governments used taxpayer money to bail out the banks. And there was absolute outrage because the banks had been gambling and speculating and then paying all of these huge bonuses, everyone getting paid a lot, and then they just got bailed out by the government using the taxpayers' money. So it was completely unfair to the people who had worked hard, saved all their money, been good citizens, and then the bankers of the time were simply gamblers, speculators, and they caused all of these problems. So what was passed was something called a bail-in law. So let, let's look at this. What is a bail-in? A bail-in provides relief to a financial institution on the brink of failure by requiring the cancellations of debts owed to creditors and depositors. We'll talk about that in a moment. A bail-in is the opposite of a bail-out, which involves the rescue of a financial institution by external parties, typically governments, using taxpayers' money for funding. Bailouts help prevent creditors from taking on losses, while bail-ins mandate, again, we're seeing this word mandate, creditors to take losses. Now, the question is probably in your mind right now. Well, who are the creditors? Well, that would be you and I and everybody else that uses a bank account, which is pretty much almost 100% of citizens and, and people, especially in developed nations, especially in the US, Canada, UK, Australia, Europe, etc. Pretty much everyone uses a bank account of some sort, whether that's a current account, checking account, or a savings account. So this applies to everyone. And if you do watch that video that I, I made a year and a half ago, it explains how bail-ins were used in Greece and Cyprus, and since then, it's been used in other countries. And you would you know, expect this to be completely illegal and huge outcry, which that's what happens. There is outcry, but nothing happens because the government mandates this by law. So let's continue on. How did this come about then? Big banks were deemed too big to fail following the financial crisis of 2007 and 8, resulting in government bailouts at the expense of taxpayers. Financial reforms ushered in with the Dodd-Frank Act eliminated bailouts and opened the door for bail-ins. Bail-ins allow banks to convert debt into equity to increase their capital requirements. They shift the risk to unsecured creditors, i.e. that is you. If you're getting even 0.1% interest from the bank, you are a creditor to the bank, including depositors whose account balances exceed the FDIC limit of $250,000. 
Uh, I'll talk about that again in a moment. You can avoid bail-ins by spreading your assets across different banks and by monitoring changes in financial regulations. Well, yes and no, kind of. The problem now is if you look at who owns all of these banks, so you go to the high street and you say, okay, I've got this bank, this bank, this bank, I've got all these different options. Not really, you might think you've got a dozen options, but usually one banking group might own five or six of those banks. So the insurance cover, regardless of your country, doesn't transition to each separate bank. It goes to the banking group. Most people aren't aware of this. So when they're telling you to spread out their risk or your risk, it doesn't really apply because you're gonna be falling under the same banking group category. Another scam that I talk about is these insurance programs like the FDIC and whatever else. Why do I call them scams? Because they are not funded. This is the key here. Do you really think there is a bank account sat there somewhere with trillions of dollars or hundreds of billions of pounds or whatever your currency is, euros, trillions of euros? Do you honestly think there is a bank account just sat there with all of this money in? No, there isn't. So what would they do? They would have to create this money. So let's just look at this rationally. Let's say we're in a period of very high inflation, which uh, certain politicians think is being caused by Putin. No, inflation is the expansion of the monetary supply. That is what it is. That is inflation, inflating the monetary supply. Too much money printing. Okay, so now that we've established that, if all of these banks start to fail, the government's gonna say, right, it's okay, with the central bank here, we're gonna print more money. And then we, well, no, that would, that makes no sense. If the cause of the problem in the first place would be, let's say, runaway inflation or people trying to pull their money out of the banks, which you won't see happening anymore, why? Again, we've covered this numerous times. They're getting rid of the branches. They're getting rid of the ATMs. They're trying to make everything digital, digital passports, everything digital, CBDC. So that, that way you can't go to the bank. That way you can't go to the ATM and withdraw cash. So that when everything falls and fails, they say, oh, don't worry, we'll, we'll um, you know, print all this new currency. It's gonna be digital. They simply haven't got the money there. So all these people, including many of you watching who think, I'm not worried, the insurance provider's there, it's gonna take care of everything. Good luck with that because I do not trust any of them and I'm not relying on any of these insurance uh, schemes, which is what they are. So just a couple of weeks back now, the Bank of England says the UK's biggest lenders are no longer too big to fail. Again, this should be a huge national article, should be on every major news network, and yet it's not. So who does the Bank of England say will be first in line to bear the cost? Investors. Yes, investors, that means you, me and you. The Bank of England has concluded that emergency planning at the UK's biggest banks means none should require a public bailout in the event of a crisis. Oh, seems like good news, doesn't it, until you get to this paragraph. Banks that get into serious difficulties can remain open and continue to provide vital banking services. Hmm, how is that possible, you may ask? Well, with investors, not taxpayers, first in line to bear the costs. It's the same thing. You are a creditor to the bank. So they're saying, oh no, no, don't worry, the taxpayer isn't gonna pay it this time, don't worry. No, of course you are. You're, they're just doing it differently. Oh no, it won't be a bailout, this time it'll be a bail-in, don't worry, everyone will be fine. No, it, it doesn't matter either way, it's still your money that they're going to use to bail out these parasitic banks. And it's not just the banks now. Look what happened last week. We know that some of the crypto platforms froze accounts. So Binance was one of them. Also Babel, this was another one, put a freeze on withdrawals. Now for those of you who think crypto is completely secure, nothing to worry about on these platforms, let me show you this. The crypto platforms have now come in line with the banks under bail-in law. Let me read this to you. In the event that Celsius becomes bankrupt, enters liquidation, or is otherwise unable to repay its obligations, any eligible digital assets used in the earned service or as collateral under the borrow service may not be recoverable, and you may not have any legal remedies or rights in connection with Celsius obligations to you other than your rights as a creditor of Celsius under any applicable laws. 
Well, yeah, that means you've got no rights because a creditor can be bailed in. Okay, now I warn you in advance, this article is from CNN, my least favorite news network in the world. This is crucial. This is what we've been leading up to in the video. And I'm gonna tell you something else after this, which is very disturbing. China's bank run victims plan to protest, then their COVID health codes turned red. Liu, a 39-year-old tech worker in Beijing, arrived in the central city of Zhangzhou on Sunday with all the boxes ticked to travel under China's stringent COVID restrictions. He had tested negative the day before, his hotel had confirmed he could be checked in, and the health code on his phone app was green, meaning he had not been exposed to people or places deemed risks and was therefore free to travel. But when Lu scanned a local QR code next to the Zhengzhou train station, his health code came back red. A nightmare for any traveler in China where freedom of movement is strictly dictated by a color code system imposed by the government to control the spread of the virus. Local banks in one province froze tens of billions of yuan worth of deposits estimated to be about 6 billion US dollars. Everyone is mandated in China to have a QR code that tracks their exposure to COVID and these funds have been frozen since April. Anyone with a red code usually assigns people infected with COVID or deemed by authorities to be at high risk of infection immediately becomes persona non grata. They are banned from all public events and transport and are often subject to weeks of government quarantine. That all but derailed plans for Liu who had come to Zhengzhou, the provincial capital of Henan province, to seek redress from a bank that has frozen his deposits. He had put his life savings into this bank and since April hasn't been able to withdraw a penny. Now, let me ask you a question then for all of those people who, you know, oh, we need this COVID pass. We need these digital passports. Oh, we need to do this for the children and everything else. Let me ask you something. Are you not terrified by what you've just seen there on that article? If not, I, 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 I physically cannot get my head around that. I just cannot understand why so many people are loving these CBDCs and the push for a digital passport and everything else. Look what the government can do if you do not comply with what they want. These people, their bank bailed them in. They froze their accounts. So they go to peacefully protest and what happens? Their app, their passport, their digital passport turns red, locking them out of the system. What are we seeing in the West? This push for this digital passport, this push for even in supermarkets to use this digital passport so you can't get food. This push for it on transport, this push for it in banking, this push everywhere, even in schools. This is, le it is so obvious. I don't understand how people can be so stupid. It is so obvious what is happening here and what is coming. And people are sleepwalking into this digital enslavement. It, it baffles me. Another protest was planned for Monday, but as the depositors arrived, they were stunned to find their health codes, which were green upon departure, had turned red. Dozens of depositors were taken into a quarantine hotel, so basically imprisonment, guarded by police and locals officials before being sent away on trains bound for their hometowns the next day. Others were quarantined at several other locations in the city, including a college campus, according to the witnesses and online posts. Ladies and gents, I don't know what else I can do to keep warning you about these things. So many people either crit you know, criticize, critique my videos, say it's all doom and gloom and nonsense, and oh, this is, this is dumb, and he's making it all up. It's happening right in front of your eyes, and yet, People are blind to this. They simply cannot see it. All that I can do, all that you can do if you believe me when I talk about these things, is keep spreading the word, keep sharing the videos, keep just doing everything I talk about here and protecting yourself as best you can. Make sure you've got some of you know this stuff. Make sure you've got some cash on hand because there's gonna come a time when you will not be able to get cash anymore. I promise you this it will come in the near future. You will not be able to get cash. And if you haven't bought something like silver and gold, for example, 
or you haven't got things to, to barter with, if it got that sort of Mad Max, what would you do? By the way, I have links in the description below for where I buy my gold and silver from. Not a recommendation, but I've been using these companies for absolutely years, either UK, USA or global, and I've never had a problem with them. Uh, up to you if you want to go down and check those out. But honestly, just do something. Don't just bury your head in the sand here because this is going to end up very, very badly for all of us. Thank you so much for watching today. Take care. God bless. I will see you tomorrow.